22 boxes, a quarter of a million pounds, and just one player. Welcome to Deal or No Deal's Christmas Stars. As always, we have 11 people in the East Wing. We have 11 people in the West Wing. And they are all here to support one extraordinary individual who has been nominated for past deeds and current deeds to be our Christmas star 2008. I can guarantee you that you are going to love this show. How could I make such a positive guarantee? Well, when we had the Deal or No Deal Christmas Stars last year, our shows were the most watched shows on Channel 4 over Christmas. We know this is exactly the kind of deal that you want to see at this special time of the year. And you will not be disappointed, because our Christmas Stars this year are truly remarkable people. Here comes the player who is about to do battle with the banker. I was in Magaluf and I started working there in year 2000. I was there for three summers and it's brilliant. The day I had my accident, I was um, at a beach party and we go there because there's massive rocks that you can dive off. When I hit the water, I realised instantly that I couldn't move. And I thought to myself, I'd broke my back initially and uh, I kept trying to write myself, but I couldn't, so I tried to, I just thought, take one last deep breath, but obviously I was underwater, so, and that's when I passed out, and that was the last thing I can remember, really. I think initially you just think, oh, it'll be all right, you'll get, of course you will, it's this, they just, you know, worst case scenario, people say things, but actually, you know, as time went on, it sort of did become clear he was gonna be in a wheelchair forever, and that was that. You can feel yourself in a di downward spiral, yeah getting depressed and things just making making yourself worse and I just realised that people won't come and visit me in hospital if I kept being miserable and crying every time they turned up. Ian is an absolute inspiration to everybody that knows him. We've always been the same with him. We don't treat him any differently now as to how we would have treated him if he hadn't have had the accident. It's just exactly the same as it always has been. If not anything more, he's a bit cheekier because he can get away with it. <laughs> Ian does um, a lot of work with Backup now. They helped him when he was in hospital. They came into the hospital um, to meet everybody that's had an injury. We offer challenging outdoor activity courses, um, a mentoring scheme, wheelchair skills training, um, all for people who've been, uh, been paralysed with uh, spinal cord injury. I think the first thing Ian did was, uh, was a skydive, um, way back four or five years ago now. He's an excellent role model for, um, for, for guys that are newly injured and um, with a similar kind of injury level as him. Sometimes it's just showing people what's, what's achievable because they're not in the right state of mind. You say, oh, well, do you want to try this? No, mate. It's quite hard and you, I, obviously I know exactly what they're going through and you don't want to see these things sometimes, but it's a great feeling. One of the lads once said to me, oh, I've stuck in my house for two months until you taught me how to drop down a curb and get back up again. And and just think that's great, because somebody helped me, and and that's why I do it as well, because I know how much it can change your life. He's a really good teacher, he's very patient with people, and he understands that actually people have got fears and people have got concerns, and he's been there himself, he's had those same fears, and I think seeing him do that and him talking about going out with his friends and us going to V and have, just having a normal life with a girlfriend, you know, with mates and stuff, helps other people believe that, yeah, I can have that as well. He came back one time saying that he could teach them all these new tricks on his wheelchair, tried to show us, fell straight out the back and smacked his head, so I was hoping he ain't going to show him that one anymore. <laughs> I don't feel disabled, it's not the first thing I think about, you know. That's just how I live my life now, I don't think about my disability and things I can't do, just get on with it and do what you can do and keep pushing yourself and you'll always you can find out whether you can or you can't then, can't you? If I was to describe Ian in one word, it would have to be cheeky. Naughty. <laughs> Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, our deal or no deal Christmas star, Ian Galatley. Thank you. 
Agnes. And a very Merry Christmas to you, Ian. Welcome. That's a truly inspirational story there. Clearly uh, an inspiration to a lot of people. Were you surprised when you were nominated for this? Um, well, yeah, a little bit, yeah. My sister told me that she'd done it, and uh, I was well chuffed when I heard Where it, is she? My sister is there, number 11. Hello. 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 What inspired you to um, nominate him? Well, I know how much he loves the show, and he does so much for other people, and he's done so much for himself. I just wanted to do something for him as well. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Makes a change all these people saying nice things about me. Certainly <laughs> <laughs> so they don't happen when the cameras aren't rolling, I tell you. <laughs> well, make the most of the next hour, then, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your dreams and ambitions. Um, if you win big money here, how will it affect your life, Ian? What do you want to do? There's a lot of stuff I could buy to make my life easier, you know, adaptions for a car or powered, powered wheels to help me push because my hands and my arms don't work properly. So a bit of the shopping list would go on, on stuff like that. But holidays, clothes, things like that. Yeah, I'm sure I could spend it. I'm sure I could spend it. <laughs> and how are you going to play the game? Because, as you know, the banker, frankly, doesn't have a heart. And the fact it's Christmas is not going to change his attitude. How are you going to approach him? I don't know. I'm a bit of a gambler, so we'll see. You like a gambler? I like to play poker, so it's more strategic gambling. It's all about odds. And... Yeah, I saw in your file, actually, that it said that uh, what you'd really like to do is invite the banker over to your house on a Tuesday night and have a game of poker with him. A few of the lads, yeah, we play... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> only small stakes for him. It's only £20, so, you know... But, yeah, you'd come and have a game with us, see if, see if he's any good. Ian, this is going to be fascinating. Uh, normally, of course, this is the point at which I say I need you to confirm you've chosen, but you haven't yet. Uh, for Christmas stars, we make the selection in public. And so what I'd like you to do now, please, is uh, choose a box and tell me why. It's got to be box number 22. Why? Because I watch this show all, every day and, like, oh, it's... Dino called it the death box, didn't he? Yeah. And I broke my neck on the 22nd as well, so I don't think I could pick it. So it's changed my life once before. Let's see if it can do it again. Wow! <laughs> Would you bring it round, Sean? <laughs> Cheers, mate. That's perfect. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you. Right, we're going to have a great game. And uh, that game will begin right after we take a little break. Okay. And I just guarantee everyone is going to come back. We have always had brilliant games, not always big money games, but fabulous games for Christmas. Come back when we start Ian's Christmas Star Game. See you in a moment. <laughs> about to begin because he is one of this year's Christmas stars. In the East Wing and the West Wing we have various friends and associates of Ian's. First five boxes. Ian, your game is underway. Good luck. <laughs> right. I think I'll start with number two. John and Frizz, and I met John when I used to work in Spain. Welcome to the game, John. Would you please open box number two? <laughs> Ten quid. <laughs> oh. Next one, next one. I um, think I'll go with Sean, who's the wheelchair skills coordinator. And uh, no, box number one, Sean, then, please. So good. <laughs> I'm gonna go with my best mate over there, Wesley. You've had an hard time with it, didn't you, kids? So make sure you uh, right. have a good one, mate, eh? Hey? Nice one, Wes. That's okay, Wes. Please open box 17. That's all right.
Graham was just a hiccup. So surreal. <laughs> is, it, is it odd being here? Yeah, really odd. Really odd. Youssef. Youssef's one of the first people I taught wheelchair skills to. And uh, he's been a good mate ever since. So, number 16, Youssef. Just before you open that, Youssef, when you, when you meet someone for the first time, when you met Youssef for the first time, how do you sort of try and instantly bond with somebody? You just have to gauge everyone differently, don't you? Some people want to, will it, want to talk to you and you strike up a friendship and, that, and it's quite easy and then other people... You tell your really... own story first. No, I don't, really, I don't really like to tell people... Well, I don't mind telling them, but I don't really like to... Oh, I'm Ian, I broke my neck six years ago doing this, that and the other, because there's so much more behind people than an accident in a wheelchair, you know? So, to me, I'm, I'm not really interested. Right. Not, not in a bad way, you know? <laughs> don't care. <laughs> How's that make you feel, you say? <laughs> yeah. This has come as a bit of a shock. As... Yeah, it is. Yeah. Here we are trying to have a good time and win a load of money and oh. you've just had this relationship completely destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir. Ian, my friend, I've seen you working so hard Gee, helping other new, newly spinal injured, so you really deserve, you know, big money, so I really awesome. hope you'll get the blue one, man. Cheers, mate. I think I'll go to my good friend, number Chris, 14. <laughs> number Chris? Number Chris! <laughs> number Chris. <laughs> uh, we would like, um, what should we have, 10p? Yeah, go on, I'll have that one, that'll do. Yeah. You want to be greedy and have a penny, do I? Okay, number Chris, could we have 10p out of box 14? I'll do my best. Good luck, Ian. If yes. You, yes, here we go. If you thought it was surreal up to this point, it's now going to become decidedly odd. He is here just for you, Ian. Talk to him. Hello. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I enjoy a game of poker. Nibbles. <laughs> Winner has to buy pizza for everyone. <laughs> That's you lot, that is. is uh... <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> very much. Right, what was he saying? <laughs> he's just saying uh, he likes cheesy nibbles at the game of poker if uh, if he comes round. And uh, um, my first offer is nine and a half thousand pounds. I sort of got the impression that he was saying something about this lot there. Right rabble is the word I think he Right is. rabble. Different uh, Accent he's got there than mine, yeah, but that was try, try and do try and do an impression. No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he talks. It is. Nine and a half thousand pounds is now the value of box twenty-two. That is a lot of money. That is a lot of money, but I'm ready for the question now. Nine and a half thousand pounds. Deal or no deal? No deal. Thank you. <laughs> I will go with four. John D down the bottom there. How do you know him? Down the pub, school, things like that. OK, John, it's you. Would you please open box number four? Good luck, mate. Cheers, Bob. dream that went a bit like this, you know. You had a dream that it went like this? Well, you dream about taking that many blues out, anyway, any doors. Box number 15, Kel, over there. 
Gail is a good friend. I've known her since I was 10, and she's also my assist PA now who helps me with my care and stuff. So, yeah, Kel, number 15. OK, Kel, can you keep these blues going for him? I'll try my best. Good luck, Ian. Fifteenth now. Well, I don't know why you. <laughs> and now the eager nation are here, uh, clearly wanting you to win big, uh, and I think they'll be back anyway. Frankly, because it's a great show, but you might want to just give them a message and encouragement. Check the turkey, make sure it's done, and come back after the break. <laughs> All right, down to work. Come back. <laughs> Shakira presents Oral B 3D White. Christmas stars. And at the moment, actually, you, you're living your dream, aren't you? You said that yeah. you've been dreaming uh, the game and dreaming you'd take out the blues and it's going all right. One to go. Right, next one, next one. God, choose someone interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go with my poker player and friend Adam over there, box number 19. Hello, Adam. Good luck, sir. Hey. Are you... <laughs> that was a strange noise. Wasn't it? <laughs> is he, uh, is he Russian or... It, he's a mumbler. He's a mumbler? It, mm, 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 mm. A professional mumbler. Do you have a job? Yeah, I do, yeah. What do you, what do, you do? <laughs> AstroTurf maintenance, man. AstroTurf maintenance? And how do you maintain it with a plastic lawnmower? <laughs> yeah. Hey, sweep it. You sweep it. <laughs> is this a big broom that you have? Do you have one of those long ones? No, or it's what? like a little tractor thing, that's it. <laughs> you spend all day riding up and down on plastic grass in a little tractor. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Does it come in different colours? Yeah. Tell me about the colour of it. <laughs> Light green, dark green. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it's just too exciting for me. Could you please, could you please open box 19? Cheers, pal. Five grand, that's all right. <laughs> they're, get, they're getting the hang of it now. They do weeds to go with it. <laughs> Buttercups and things like that. Plastic clover, no? <laughs> nah. nah. He Reed doesn't want to be here, does he? <laughs> Not now. You can't wait to get back on your little mower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, dear. <clears throat> he has brought an extraordinary bunch. <clears throat> we haven't started on Andrea, no. <sighs> You know about Andrea, do you? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh right, okay. I'll just ask whether that's true, because um, that's quite an interesting thing, that. Very, very interesting. <clears throat> Andrea. Yeah? Is it true, as he says, that until recently, you thought horses' saddles... Oh, my God. <laughs> How would you know that? <laughs> were made from gorillas' hands. Andrea... It was just a spur of the moment thing, it just came out. It's kids and leathery. <laughs> but I couldn't figure out how there was loads of handprints, why there wasn't loads of handprints on the actual saddle. So, I don't know, I'm not a brightest. <laughs> how does he know that? How do you know that, Shinson? Oh, he knows everything. Oh, my word, here we go. He knows something else about you. Don't want to know. 
Yes, I know when a plane takes off, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes off and then it banks to the left or the right. She does. I can't believe this. She does. <laughs> yeah? She does. That you think that when an aircraft takes off from the airport and then maybe it banks to the left and then it maybe banks to the right one, that actually the pilot's doing it so people can look out of the window. <laughs> I thought he was kidding you! <laughs> <laughs> But he doesn't do it over the sea. It always seems to be over, like, the houses and everything. <laughs> yeah. No. Yes, he says, there's no point in messing about with you because you know the game. Okay. Thank you very much. Because of the large hole on the left-hand side and the fact that... Uh, you have got four of your power five, and he has only got two left. Your offer now is not nine and a half thousand, it's fourteen thousand pounds. <laughs> you want me to draw it out for TV or? Hey, you can do whatever you want. I, I really have a question, your, please, your... then, now. Okay, good. <laughs> do you want me to draw it out for TV? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> right then, are you ready? I'm ready. £14,000. Deal or no deal? No deal. Thank you. <laughs> right. I think I will have Kelly over there, number 21. Good luck, Ian. I think I'm going to have to go with Nick Beaumont over there. He's a mate through. I met in Spain. Funny lad. Box number 13, please, Nick. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Number 12. I've known Polly all my life. She's my sister's best friend, so. Good luck, Ian. Cheers, mate. 20 grand. <laughs> yeah, 20,000's gone. Someone explain to Andrea what's going on. Hello. Yeah, look at that board. There's a big hole on the left hand side. Says he can't play mind games with you because you know the stats. No. Nope. Can be oh. as charming as he likes, but money don't, the numbers don't lie, do they? No, no, they don't. That's a very, very good way of putting it. Very good way. Uh, your box is now worth twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> There is definitely something emerging here. It's a lot of money. Noel, you can ask me the question if you like. I will. Ian, £20,000. Deal or no deal? No deal, no. No deal. This guy's going to the air. <laughs> Quite clearly, Ian, as long as the big money is there, you're going to keep going, aren't you? I'm going to go for it, mate, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. What a great game this is going to be. Come on, see if you can find the 1p and the 10p. to go with my good friend Lee over there, box number 20. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> you described him as a good friend, but he actually smiled when he saw it was 35,000. <laughs> oh, come on. Gonna go with... How do you know Dave? Just a mate. <laughs> Not a good one, like Wes, just, just a mate. 
Could you be doing more, Dave? I could be, but... Yeah? Why, do why don't can, you, though. Dave? He seems a very nice guy. I'm that kind of person, to be honest with you, no? What, you don't really <laughs> care about people very much? I do care about Ian quite a lot. Do you? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Dave. Good luck, mate. Yeah. It's an amazing board, isn't it? If you see the show a lot, as you say... It's really good. You haven't seen one with such a big hole in the middle. Look at that. Massive. Andrea. Yes. Why should the nation come back to Ian's game? Because it's a fantastic show. Ian's a lovely person and so is yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a compelling argument, but I know you will be back. <laughs> Years ago, the Twix founders had a falling out, so production was divided between two factories. Welcome back to Ian Galatly's game. You are an inspiration, Ian. You're here because uh, Vicky felt that you were more than worthy of, of, of the honour of playing the game. Um, what were you doing before the accident? I was lifting. Mm -hmm. and do you think you will go back to some sort of... I'm in scaffolding. No. <laughs> Paid employment? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was hoping to. I've had a few interviews and stuff, but... Anything in mind? I don't know. I quite like doing stuff that I do, you know, and speaking to people and, and stuff like that. So Something in motivational know. training? Yeah, or well, with troubled youths or things like that, you know, people yeah. that... Yeah, something like that. All right, well, you never know. Yeah, but nice. we're in the middle of a game. You're nearly at eight box, and you still have the three largest boxes undiscovered. Let's find the penny. My birthday, 18. Let's go for that. So, Adam, number 18. OK. Good luck, mate. Oh, cheers, mate. Well, you're going uh, to have to wait a little bit longer to find that penny, but your climb has been uh, magnificent. Nine and a half, 14, and the last time you very quickly declined £20,000 for your box. Hello. Oh, he says he's not enjoying Christmas anymore, <clears throat> and it's your fault. Ah, I'm glad of that. Huh? Thanks. Go on, your best shot. Thirty thousand pounds. What are you thinking? Money. No, just uh, I'd say this money that is in. I want to gamble that big time. Ian, Ian, you need to think about what we've spoke about and what's there and what's going to happen. You know, you need to think about both things both ways. Ian, you always say to me, regret the things you do, not the things you don't. So. <laughs> Can I say it the other way round? <laughs> Is it? I think I said it the other way round, did I? Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I scream at the telly at this point, but it's just a bit odder now, isn't it? <laughs> To have that block of three is, for a gambler, very comforting. What do you reckon, Em? I think you would be really unlucky to take all those three out, but if you take one or two of them out, I don't think you're going to get an offer like that again. But we've said that we've come here with nothing and we can go home. I know it's, I know it's really important, I know it's amazing, but if you want to go for it... Is that true, though, that you've come here with nothing? Well, well, in the case well these Andrew, lots, so, clearly. yeah, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Had a good, good time out of here, haven't we, so? 
but still, think 30 grand would change my life. Ian, take a minute and think about it. Don't rush well, it. Well, you've just said a really it. telling thing. £30,000 would change your life. But I'd kick myself forever if I gambled it and they go, oh. Go on, Ant. What's that, mate? Who's your edit? Gambler, Who's your edit? 30 grand. No. I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> Come on, Em. What would you think I should do? Come on. Just say what you think I should do. No deal. Right. Yeah. 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 So I get a free jail card, ain't it? No. That's all I wanted. Can you ask me the question then, please? Ian. £30,000. Deal or no deal? No deal, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with me mate Wheeler over there, number 10, Stuart, number 10. I know Stuart from doing wheelchair skills with him. Stuart, 75,000, 100,000, quarter of a million. <laughs> if we were to get through this round without discovering any of those, it would be remarkable. It would be one of the most astonishing climaxes we've ever had. Yeah. Well, good luck, Ian. Cheers, mate. Ready. Well, the good news, the good news is you can't decimate the game now. There's two to go to the next offer. If you found 1p or 10p, believe me, it would be sensational and we will lift the roof. What's it going to be, Ian? Jim Bob box number three, please. Good luck, Ian. Can't look. Can't look. Ian, you're just on the verge of creating one of the most powerful climaxes we've ever had in I the history it. of the game. And for this to happen on our Christmas Star show is rather special. If you find 10p, you have got an extraordinary offer coming. Oh, uh, come on, Vic. Post number 11. Oh, yeah. And uh, she nominated me. So I just so much want this to work out for you, Ian. The atmosphere here is is just magical. Absolutely fantastic. You must sense it. Everybody really wants this to just work out. Just nervous at the minute. It's me. <laughs> all right, all right. Vicky, again, thank you so much for nominating your brother. Thank you for bringing him into our deal or no deal lives. Top of the board is just fine. Even at this point, you could afford to lose 75,000, Frank. But if it's 10p, he's just created the most unbelievable climax after a fabulous blue round. Vicky, open box number 11, please. It's good, babe.
An all red five box is so rare, but to have the top three is extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen that. I cannot remember, I cannot recall the last time that we were at five box and the three biggies were still undiscovered. We have to be coming to the conclusion that your choice of 22 was extremely wise. It's doing me all right so far. It's giving him an a day, come here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't choose box 22 at random. No. You chose it quite deliberately. And have you just chosen a fortune for yourself? Hello! <laughs> Christmas, are you having a good time? Really, is that true? He's done something that 800 players have never ever managed. Completely ruined your Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Seventy-one thousand. Oh, that one's this one's harder than the last one, isn't it? It's a fabulous summer, I know, I but know. you have created a fabulous game. Know, you know, this is this is this is right up there. It's probably top five in terms of what's been created. I'd be screaming at the telly, go for it. You still get a grand or three grand, even if it all goes wrong. But seventy-one grand, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I just want to gamble so bad. Emily, do you fancy just coming out and having a word with him? Come on, babe. <laughs> what do you reckon I should do? Oh, it looks really different from this angle. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Look at that. It's pretty amazing. Isn't it is, isn't it? £71,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. A lot Thanks. of money. But... I know what I'm going to do now. Oh. Oh. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, I do you know sure? what I'm going to do, yeah. 100% right. I know what I'm going to do, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, no, I have made my decision. I'm ready for the question now. Yeah. Seventy-one thousand pounds. Deal. Or no deal. Sorry for the people at home that are like me, screaming, but deal. Even if I had got the 250, that amount of money is, is massive to me and will change my life so much. And I just I want to win the game so I can I can turn it round now anyway, can't I? And leave it with one and three grand. And then I've really done it. So <laughs> oh, 
Oh. I, uh, I can tell that the gambler inside is still yeah. fighting away at you. Yeah. Uh, Ian, let's play on. And you, sir, are right on the threshold of creating possibly the most sensational game. If you were to leave 1,000 and 3,000 at the end, it would be quite extraordinary. Andrea, okay. number six would be first. Andrea? Yep. Wouldn't it be brilliant if the very first box is the quarter of a million? Late. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Are you actually going to end up creating the dream end? You dreamt about taking the blues out at the beginning and the player's dream is the 100,000 and the quarter million at the end. It'd be eight next. It'd be eight next. Jen? Number eight. Okay, good luck, Ian. 75,000. <laughs> no. You know, you read the game mm -hmm. brilliantly. There were people who shouted and cheered and, and whatever, but in the game you've created, 75,000 was a component of the, of the perfect end round. If this is 3,000, Ian, you have actually turned your back on the deal or no deal dream finish. Oh. Which one? I don't think I could do it to M, so I think I'd have gone to number nine, Anne. And we need you to have a quarter of a million pounds. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Open the box, please. All the best, Ian. Under a thousand. <laughs> And somewhat spookily, Ian, you have created the very finish that Laura, the only winner oh, of a quarter yeah. of a million, had. He only offered her 45, didn't he? But they said yeah. that was a mistake, so. Well, he said that was an error, and of course, your game was very different just before this. Hello? Oh, that's really terrifying. <laughs> Ian, you invited him round to your place for a game of poker and a bit of a gamble. And, Ian, you're at his place, and he would like to offer you a gamble. <laughs> Ian... I, just, I only just thought of that, then. Ian, the banker is saying, give me back my £71,000 and I'll let you open that box or that box, because you do get the swap, swap guaranteed. Tonight. You can open either 7 or 22, but you would have to say deal to the banker's gamble. Don't know what you want to do. I know what I want to do now. You know what you want to do? Yeah. OK, let me just reiterate. If you say deal, you are handing back 71,000 and going for it. If you say no deal, your 71,000 remains with you. Ian, bankers gamble. Deal or no deal? I want to keep my 71,000 and I'm done. So, <laughs> bankers, no deal. It's all right. But let's play out the scenario. You uh, selected 22 at the beginning. It was the 22nd that I broke my neck, so I th it's changed my life once, so I thought it might change my life again. So that's why I picked it. Right. I wonder whether you would have gone for the swap at this point. No. No, no chance. No chance. So what I'm about to reveal was actually fate for you. Was that number destined to come into your life again and give you a quarter of a million pounds? Or have you sold a three grand box for 71,000? I know what I want to see. I do. Here it comes. Did you turn your back on the biggie? No! <laughs>
Wow. OK, Emily, would you please reveal that he would never have got his hands on the quarter of a million because it was over there in box number seven. Yeah. Yeah. I did it pretty much, did I? That, sir, uh, is called a banker spanking. Yeah. <laughs> the top of the game by a country mile, 71,000, and you had 3,000 in the box. That is a comprehensive victory over the banker. I've got some gifts from Deal or No Deal for you, on top of your 71,000. A set of garden furniture to go on the decking that your mates built for you in the garden. Oh. A top of the range gas barbecue. Yeah. An Ergoflex HD memory foam mattress, plus a pair of pillows. A top of the range poker set and table. Yeah. A pair VIP tickets to next year's V Festival. Oh. A designer shopping spree in Leicester. Oh. With a personal shopper oh, yes. and a chauffeur driven car to and from your house. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and one more thing. I guess this is going to have a big impact on your life. A Viper fully powered hand cycle which will be custom made to fit oh, your yeah. right. That's amazing. As always, we have our deal or no deal Christmas stars trophy. You struck up a friendship during your recovery in the spinal unit of Northern General Hospital where she worked. You know her as H, here oh. to present your Christmas stars award, Helen Wordsworth. Oh. whole experience of today has been absolutely wonderful. I've won more money than I can dream of. I've had a great time. I've come to the studio with my favourite programme and Spank the Banker. So I'd just like to wish everybody that's been watching a very Merry Christmas.